All right, Jay Sizzle. So the Chicago Bears offense from the president today, from the, the chair, uh, the chair pointed out some people. He pointed out yeah. a linebacker and he pointed out a running back. And I'll tell you that the running back he pointed out is not only pedestrian, but he's not one of the best Bears court, uh, running backs in probably the last 10 seasons. Am yeah, I insane I, yeah, for thinking really, that? Uh, no, I, I really think, well, he's a guy who runs hard, who actually um, fits the mode of what a Chicago Bear running back should be. I mean, you look at him, he's got a little bit of Walter Payton in him. Uh, you look at him, he's got a little bit of uh, the smoothness of uh, Matt Forte. Um, he's a guy who's going to be tough up in the middle, and, and he's a guy you can give the ball to him, and he's, and he's pretty secure with the rock. So um, I think he's – well, I, I was very excited for when they got him. What was that, the 78 pick or something like that mm -hmm. in the draft? Um, I was excited when they got for him because he was one of those guys who broke tackles at Iowa. Mm -hmm. So – um, because of that and his just ability to be able to hit the holes and run north and south, I thought he was a great pickup for the Bears. I still think he's probably going to be, as you say, maybe one of their best running backs. But we all know that uh, your best running back, except for the great Walter Payton, is um, perceived by having at least a more than decent offensive line. Mm -hmm. And we know – this is what the problem is, the Achilles heel of the Chicago Bears. And for David Montgomery, is this offensive line who's still, if not the worst offensive line in the league, they're probably number two. You know, one of the things that irks me with David Montgomery is invariably he likes to try and make something out of nothing. And when you have a line that's bad, there's nothing you can make out of nothing. I mean, it's just bad. There, there's no, there's no help. So if you hit the hole, and you take the wrong hole, my friend, you know, if you you're there, you're on the field, and you go to go in the wrong hole, uh, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. And a lot of times, you saw David Montgomery, like a bad bedroom scene where he was just in the wrong hole, and nobody knew how to get him out of that hole. It was just. He was just there stuck. Now, I like Khalil Herbert, and I think I like Herbert because of his duality, but I liked Herbert because Herbert would take an angle. He knew when to hit the hole, and he was like, look, I don't care if they're blocking or not. I'm going to run through this, and I'm going to hit this angle. I'm not, I'm not going to try and do anything else. I'm going to hit this angle. But between Herbert, Williams, Montgomery, they still were mismanaged and misused. I mean, you got Damian Williams sitting there, and you've not used him the whole season. You, you've, you've used him sparingly. I don't even know if you've used him well. You had no plan. So let's go back, Jay. Let's, let's roll back. You first start off with Andy Dalton, right? You lied and told him, Andy, you're going to be super. You're going to be great. You're going to be what we really need. Um, nobody else believed that. I don't even think Andy Dalton's wife believed it. But look, wow. if you're going to pay me that kind of money, I'll come there and I'll be the revitalized savior. You just saw the year before what happened to him in Dallas. It didn't get any better. This is a worse line and a worse coaching staff. So then you already had Nick Foles there. Nick Foles is Andy Dalton. Same guy. At least Nick Foles has won a championship. Andy Dalton has won nothing. And then you trade away your first round pick and you get the wonder child, which you have no plan for. <laughs> you don't, you have no plan from the beginning of preseason to the end of this season. All you know is Nagy said, I'm not going to lose with this rookie. I'm going to play this old man. And in Minnesota, last game of the season, it worked well for three quarters. And then... It just got ridiculous. It was, it was so bearish that everything that could happen wrong happened to the Bears in the fourth quarter of Minnesota, Chicago, final game of the season. Nobody knew where they were going. Your cornerbacks were giving up on routes. Nobody was running the right routes. David Montgomery was averaging one point no yards 
it was ridiculous and it was horrendous. So Jay, I'm asking you now, what can you do with a team that's built as poorly as this team is built offensively? First thing you got to do is get your offensive line squared away. I don't care what else you do. I don't care about nothing else. I don't care who you run out. Who's your number one wide receiver? Uh, at one point in time, it was number 12, at least he said so. What type of production was he able to produce? Well, a lot of that happens because look who was throwing him the football. Your number one pick? Your $10 million man? Your $20 million man? It didn't even get better as the price went up. So your biggest problem is that in the NFL, we know, as all major great franchisees know, that if you have a good to very good offensive line, you're going to be a good offense. You look at the Patriots, look at the uh, Dallas Cowboys, look at the Steelers, look at teams who keep their offenses up there, look at the Saints. Um, you're going to have good offensive lines. So the problem is with the Bears and is how do you find a online, an online guru who knows how to pick guys who are going to fit into this system and turn this offensive line around and get these guys steadily in the top 10 of offensive line production? <laughs> um, especially on run and pass block. If you can do that, then it doesn't make, make a difference who you have a quarterback or who you have a difference at wide receiver. They're going to get the ball out in the NFL and people are going to catch it. Okay, you have that. You have him sitting probably doing analyst gigs, a six-time pro bowler, somebody that was with your franchise for, what, 11 years? You had that in Olin Cruz until you lied and told everybody in the country he is a liar you should take everything he says with a grain Olin. of salt. Olin. And the chairman Olin. has Olin. to be worried about coming outside because Ola might come see you. O Ola said they was gonna pay him fifteen dollars an hour. <laughs> I don't believe I don't believe that at all. I mean, I mean, it, yeah. it probably felt like fifteen dollars an hour. It was yeah, minimum it wage for him. Yeah, it wasn't gonna be fifteen dollars. It just probably wasn't the money he wanted. Yeah, but it wasn't gonna be fifteen dollars an hour for him to come out there. How you know? Here's the thing about it. Didn't he work with uh, Mustafer? Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, He's worked with he, everybody. He's worked with he, that whole front line, except the uh, old uh, man. Is anybody, is anybody all pro? Is anybody in the right position? Because that's the next question but I was going to ask he, you. He worked with Mustafer directly. Is this correct? I believe so. Was Mustafer and, and was he an all pro this year? He said was, that the reason he worked, the only reason why Mustafa was able to survive is because he worked all over. Okay, so let's not take credit for somebody who's already in the league, who's already starting in the league, mm -hmm. all right? Now, if you took him off a junior college team and built him up over four years and made him into an NFL guy, that'd be, I'd take that. But, don't, you know, a guy's already in the league. Now, maybe you came and gave him some tips and some pointers, and you work with him on hand placement and stuff like that a few times. But are you mean to tell me you were out there like Mick with Rocky and you were had him drinking eggs and going out there chasing chickens? Or do you were working with him every day? Hand placement you know, rock. Right. Four o'clock in the morning, you were up and you guys are out hitting the block and just tackling dummies and all. Were you doing that? If you were doing that, then yeah, Olin, I would say, okay, you helped build that guy up. If you went out three, four, five, six times with him, maybe that's a lot. I don't think you did that. Maybe you did. Correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, you went out there and really worked with him. But I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this was, you know, a couple of times, two, three, four times maybe, you know, at the most. And you put, you know, hey, here's hand placement. This is what you do with this. This is how you call this. This is how you snap the ball here. Mm -hmm. Right? You, you, weren't, you weren't like you were out there getting, getting him ready to fight Apollo Creed. You know, if so, you were, if you know, if you were doing that, the Bears would have known it. Yeah. And they would have said, "Wow, this guy really helped develop this kid. Maybe we need to bring him into the organization." Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, come on. My biggest question now, Jay, is when you look at their line, do they have 
these young men in the right positions? And then are there some ones that they're overvalued? Okay, so let's just say Cody White here is a given. He's going to be there. He's going to be your left guard. All right, so talk to me about Jenkins. Talk to me about their right and left tackle. Should their right tackle be their left tackle and their left tackle be their right tackle? And you're still now missing a right guard. Because uh, unless you move James Daniels to center, which is where you said you projected him to be, uh, this line kind of sucks, sir. Uh, what say you? Well, the problem is that you got Jenkins. Hey, kudos to him for not letting anybody know that he had back problems before he got drafted. Get your paper. Uh, that um, we don't know if any of these guys are going to be on this line next year. You know what I'm saying? Why here? Yeah, we think he's going to be there. Yeah, is Mustafa going to be there? We don't know. Is Jenkins is Jenkins going to be a bust in the league? You can't stay healthy. Is he going to be gone? I mean, the one thing that we've seen happen this year because of COVID, a lot of guys have gotten play in the NFL that would have not gotten played before. That means you got a lot more people who have tape in the NFL, and now you have opportunity for GMs around the league to find guys at a cheap price uh, who will, you know, who are playing pretty well. They can get them in here on a, I'm assuming a rookie contract if they haven't been in the league before, and you get a guy in here who's been, who's had been playing pretty well, just hasn't um, made rosters every year. So it's very possible that we might find a diamond in the rough or somebody out here who can play. However, I mean, we know most offensive lines are built in the draft. Um, they did take Tevin Jenkins earlier, but again, who is your talent evaluator? Because mm. if you didn't know his back was hurt, nobody, nobody went back and watched three years of his games. You know, what are they, how many games they play in college? Really? Like 12, maybe? Mm. Something like that. So nobody went. Nobody went through thirty six of his of his games. Nobody sat there and went through and go. Oh, you know what? He got hurt right there. Let's see what happened. Well, the thing that gets me is he played right tackle. That's where his bread and butter was. Was it right tackle, not left tackle? Right. And when you saw when he got on the field in the league, and this isn't in college, but in the league, left tackle was not his friend. Yeah. In fact, yeah. he was used and abused. Now they were hoping and a praying. They were somehow, somehow or another. But again, they know how to run offensive linemen. Ask if ask a certain surefire all pro perennial Hall of Famer if they would have left him at guard. A certain um, Mister Long, if they would have left him alone and never put him out at tackle, that guy probably still would be playing for the for the Chicago Bears. And here's a guy who didn't come back to the Bears. Answer that question there, uh, Alan Trebek. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, why didn't a guy who wanted to get back into the league after he rehabbed for injury wouldn't come back to a team who needed offensive linemen? You know, it's it's a very – it's it's a dicey thing. You've got a seventh-round pick in Larry Borum who is just a utility guy. He's played right tackle. He played left tackle. He's played guard. He's been, in fact, he came out of school as a guard. So, right. I don't know exactly where you're going to put anybody right now. Uh, and to your point, I don't even know if any of them are going to be in the same position. Right. The and show. the issue is right now, this offensive line has not, I mean, they've had spurts where they played well. I mean, I always joke about being the worst in the league. They've, they've, they've had spurts where they played well. The problem is, have they been in any position? where this unit has been consistently good all the time, and then you need to lean on them and run this football, can you do it? And that answer is no. They have not been able to do that. And they definitely have not been able to pass block because we know poor little, poor little Justin Fields, uh, with his helmet turned on sideways, when he gets up off the ground, I mean, they hit him so hard, his headband flew off. How does your headband fly off your head under your helmet? Haven't figured that one out. Um, and they haven't been able to protect that kid to keep him upright. So uh, he, he's to the point where he took so many body blows now. I, I believe he's sort of gun shy, to tell you the truth. Mm. Just, just, this is my observation. 
I think he's a little gun shy. And I think uh, if it starts off again the same way next year, you're going to see a guy go in regression because I think he believed he was going to come in and light it on fire. He saw what a certain guy was able to do with the Eagles this year. Uh, um, a certain guy who plays literally the same type of way he plays. And all of a sudden, who got replaced at Alabama, uh, who came out, nobody thought he was going to be play, able to play for the Eagles. And uh, he did fairly well. And I think Justin Fields thought he was going to come out and do the same thing, be another Jalen Hurts. And he's hurting. You like uh, that? You like that? Rude to the bro. Good Jalen Hurts. Uh, catching people out of the stands, dragging a team along the way that has no all-stars, no nothing. Team is horrible. But you got Jalen Hurts. Balling out, balling. And to that point, so how do you fix Justin Fields at this point, Jay? Oh. <laughs> how do you fix what has now, because of no plan, no direct action for him, they had nothing in play for him. Oh, they had a plan for him. He just, he just didn't fit into the plan they had. Oh, okay. Oh, I, you know what? I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, so now that you've gotten some energy drink, talk to me about the plan they have for Justin Fields and what are they going to have to have for a plan for him moving forward? He was he was Mahomes light. They're, they're, they're running the Mahomes package out there for him. You no, know, he's gonna sit back there, pat the ball a little bit, run around, slinging around the yard, use his escape ability. Um, he's gonna be able to read downfield long, but you know, they forgot that they didn't have the cheetah playing for them. They didn't have Travis Kelsey. They thought Cole Commit was gonna be Travis Kelsey. You know, just start putting adding in all these people because you look at the same movement, the Bears had the same movement on their offense as the Chiefs had on theirs. It was really way similar. Problem was that you didn't have the offensive line that the Chiefs have, and you don't have a quarterback who can make quick decisions and can get out of harm's way. You see a guy, Justin Fields, who does not – how's the best way to say this? He's like a sports car. And you know, like, remember how you had to put premium in there for that engine to run white? Mm -hmm. He's running on uh, regular. You know, he ain't running on premium. So that engine ain't firing like it's supposed to, right? He's got all the he's got all the skill set, the big arm, mm -hmm. the legs. Have you noticed that he when he goes to escape the pocket, he gets caught? Mm -hmm. Have you have you seen him run away from anybody? He's he's, uh, he's got hopped down from behind. He's and, li he, linemen have caught him, not linebackers. Linemen have caught him. He he's supposed to be the four three four four guy. You know, and, and you, you you don't you don't you don't see Kyler Murray getting caught from behind, and, and Patrick Mahomes is sort of slow, and you don't see Patrick Mahomes getting hawked down like that all the time. But Fields, when he goes to explode, he got the ball. Here we go. And I know the first couple of times, I thought, okay, here we go. He's going outside the pocket. Oh no, no, he ain't going outside the pocket. He's going down. Yeah, that Cleveland he, game exposed all of his his right. frailties. They beat him. For beginning, end, and end. Again. And he doesn't know how to fall. How do you? How are you a guy? Especially, <laughs> he's the most awkward falling guy I've ever seen. He does not know how to roll when he falls. Um, they should take him to parachute class. You know how they teach you to jump down there when you hit the ground, roll to dissipate some of that energy. This guy, he just hits the ground. All parts of him just start flying off. Then you have, uh, and, he, and he's supposed to be a really an elite baseball player, and he don't know how to slide. How do you not know how to slide? Every time he goes to slide, like he's just going to tear his ankle off. It's like, tear, dude, It's like he's going to tear his knee up. Why, why don't you get a full side? Watch Tom Brady. Tom Brady runs. Tom Brady slides. You see Let that? Down. Like he's going in a second. Butt down. That's you all you do. Butt down. Slide. Lean back and slide. He don't do that. He tries to stay up on like like almost there so I can get up faster to, to run back to the huddle to show how tough a guy I am. No, and then you then you don't slide well enough, and then somebody comes in and clacks you upside the back of the head. It's like he's very awkward when he falls down, you know, very awkward. So everyone it, has to do run, their job. Yeah, it's do your down job. Okay, you, know? you said it before. 
is Justin Fields too tough for his own good? Absolutely. Absolutely. He got too much pride. Lay down. <laughs> Stop trying to fight for stuff. <laughs> Go down. Just take it. Take it. Go it's going to happen. Go down. Go down to the ground. <sighs> if you ain't got it, lay down on the ground. Just run and lay down. Get a pillow. Put it down on the 30-yard line and take a nap. You're down. They'll, they'll come and tag you. You know what I'm saying? And get up and go back to the huddle. Every time he run, he run, I'm going to stay up here. I'm going to try to throw the ball. Dude, there's nothing to happen. Get down. Go. Get on the ground. They are coming for you. The big bad men, they're coming. It's like the shining. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. He's getting tackled by those twins. Dude. <laughs> yeah, he just, yeah, he needs to, you know. So, yeah, they, they got a whole lot of shenanigans and nonsense going on up at the Chicago Bears, Hallis of the Halls. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm waiting to see what type of, you know, it, I'm waiting to see who they're going to pull in. Because I guarantee you it's not going to be Riddick. You're not going to see the enemy coming through there. No, no, no. You know? they, but they have, <laughs> Doug Peterson has been on their list. You've got uh, the offensive coordinator from the Bills. I don't know where this thing keeps coming from with Leslie Frazier. I, I'm not. For some they're, reason, I'm confused because of their diverse because of their diversity czar up there. But have, Leslie so, Frazier? I mean, I don't. I could see now. Someone said Raheem Morris is uh, in the running, uh, the Colts' offensive coordinator. But this thing with Leslie Frazier, I'm still, I'm baffled. I'm I'm perplexed. Leslie Frazier, that's who you want to take this back to, like a light. Uh, Lovey Smith, you want you that, is that what you want to do again? This is the same nonsense that we talked about earlier in our other segment. Was this is a front office that's trying to appease their fan base? And so, what's another might as well just go get Mike Singletary then if you want to do that. Go get Mike Singletary and make uh Mike Dicka your football czar. And he don't even, Mike Dicker don't even have to come into Hallis Hall. He can just do it from his living room from Mike smoking a cigar. Hey, you guys. Hey, dude. Yeah. You guys. Ah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. You know, he can just holler and scream at the, he can just holler and scream at the TV. So how does this thing work? Are you saying, Jay Sizzle, that there is absolutely no help uh, for the beloved? What what I'm saying is that if McCaskey's left to pick this on his own up there, I think he's going to pick somebody that he likes, and that's not particularly going to be what the Chicago Bears need. You need the best football um, mind that you can afford to get in with a plan to come in and build your franchise. Because right now, the history that you had, you're now – you're now the lovable losers now. Mm -hmm. You know, you're 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 not the monsters of the midway anymore. You don't scare anybody anymore. Um, there's not any mystique anymore. You know, and that team up north, those cheeseheads, they got your whole number and they're laughing at you. Yes. And they're gonna and they're gonna come down and embarrass you again. And they're gonna keep keep embarrassing you because those people don't have anything else to do but hate <laughs> the Chicago Bears. So, is there any help for the Chicago Bears, sir? Uh, it, I mean, I, I'm, a lot of it has to do with who they bring in. I think this is a bad uh, – this Bill Polian thing is ridiculous. He has not been connected into the league. You need to go pay some money and steal somebody's GM who is just buying somebody's contract out, one of these top flight guys, mm -hmm. say, look, how much are they paying you? We'll double it. Come over here and do this over here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You, you you need to go. You need to go make a splash. You, you need a Theo Epstein type of splash. When the when the Cubs got Theo Epstein, you knew it was on and cracking. You knew it was on and cracking, and you're like, okay, Theo's gonna put it together. Why? Because he had done the same thing not too long ago with the Boston Red Sox. Mm -hmm. we, we we saw what the Chicago Bulls had did with their front office, right? When you saw that front office come in, you go, it's on and cracking. Now, we knew when they stopped playing people, when you literally saw the Bulls just stop, we're not playing him, we're not playing him, he ain't going to play no more, we just mm -hmm. going to run eight people out here. You knew, and they could start dumping people left and right. 
Mm-hmm. Now you looked up and you see what the Bulls have become in a very short period of time because they had the right front office. Why? Because they came from Denver and you saw what they built up there. You saw that 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 the, the Joker. You saw uh, what's the young kid playing um, guard for them? I can't think of his name right now. Murphy Miller, Murphy, something like that. Um, Murphy Miller. What's the, what's the guard up there at, at uh, in Denver? Hey, you're talking about the young man who tore up his knee. Yeah, what's his name? Uh, name? It's not Murphy Miller. No, well, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't know. You were closer so, with Murphy. Miller. I, I'm tossing a name out there. I can't think of what the kid's name is. Yeah, it but doesn't you, matter. But but you saw that franchise, who was a franchise that wasn't um, really in the hunt, but under this group they were in the hunt. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you saw them in the, right. in the playoffs and looking good in the playoffs. And so you knew the Bulls were in good hands. It was just okay. They could they make some moves and they made some moves. They brought in the right people. You see, you see the resurgence of Demar Derozan, mm-hmm. who I thought one time they thought they overpaid a little bit for a guy a little bit too old. But he still got some magic in him. Um, I, I said before that, that that Lonzo Ball was a huge deal way before that. Yeah. I talked about that a long time ago. That they need to figure out how to get Lonzo Ball to Chicago because it's the right type of offense for him. And now you start seeing them bringing in guys, um, player from the Lakers. Is Mac McClung still on the Bulls? I think here? that I think they re-signed him again. I think he got another ten day. Yeah, so I mean, you know, it, um, that guy you're bringing in the right type of attitude. You know, is he is he a guy going to stick in the league? Hopefully, he's jumping with, but we know he's got the right type of attitude. So, I mean, you, you brought in a bunch of guys who are hard working, hard hustling, muscle, and um, as Stacey King likes to say, and, and that mm-hmm. team looks and that team looks good. One of the better teams in the East. Now they can they stay this way? You know, two thirds of the season through, we'll see what happens. But. Um, uh, that's what the Bears need. And uh, do we believe that Michael McCaskey is going to be able to do that? Is he going to bring the right, right guy in? Bill Polian is the wrong guy to bring in. He's been outside of football for nearly 10 years. You, 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 you need to get somebody inside the loop. I, I'd rather him get – I would have rather him get one of these analysts off TV. Well, what about you, those who say Bill Polian has written a book, he's been an analyst, he's had things on the NFL Network, so uh, he's done some fantasy football things. So when 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 is the last time he ran a front office? I would have been more appeased if you had told me you were going out and getting Ozzie Newsome. Right. How many, how, how many, how many combines has he went to? Mm-hmm. How many, how many workouts has he flown out to go see? Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. How many, what is his, what is his um, scouting staff? How, who are they? Mm-hmm. Does he have five people at the ready right now flying around the country? How many was, was Bill Polian at the national championship game today? Yeah, that, should that's have been. The guy, that's not should the guy you want. In fact, not the guy you want. George McCaskey should have been on the sideline. You want a guy who is locked in, who has talked to number 99's mama. Mm-hmm. Say, hey, how you doing, number 99's mama? If your son is there at some point in time, we're going to take him. Hi, Miss no- number 75 mama. If your son is there, we're we going to take, take him, him too. Oh, yeah. I just want to, how you doing? Is it, you know, this is the best pie I have ever eaten. Uh, if your son is available, we're going to take him. Mm-hmm. That's what you, you need that guy out there. Um, when he walks into the room, the people know him by name. Hey, Joe, how you doing? So good to see you. How's your family doing? Ma'am, they doing just fine. Martha sends her regards. Now, That's I'm going to say this. That's the guy you need. You got some young people, some, and maybe the, the new diversity um, setup they have is bringing in. You've got some young guys from Cleveland. You've got some other young people who are coming in who might be a good fit. Um, do you think? And it's Jamal Murray. That's who we were trying to think about earlier. Yeah, Jamal Murray. I was close. I was close. You were. Do you think that the Bears can back into finding someone of quality? You think they can really luck up on somebody like um, a Usai Azari a, a, a from Toronto? 
you know, a young guy, and you just like, oh, yeah, but well, he's see, pretty but, good at his job. But, but see, when those people don't get lucked into, mm. they, they get found, right? Mm. You don't, you don't just fall. That guy don't just fall out the tree. You go up there and find what tree he's in and shake it and get him out of there. That's what, and and so you have to have people in place. You have to have a whole entire network that you've been keeping in the loop. All right. It's just like recruiting. All right. It's like recruiting high school recruiting. Do you really think Nick Saban is out at these people at these uh, at uh, these certain high schools when when you saw uh, football players from Chicago, Simeon mm-hmm. playing on Alabama? Well, how is he finding that kid? He ain't found that kid. He's got people in the Chicagoland area who are knocking on that kid's door talking about, hey, Nick, this is the kid right here. Matter of fact, you might need to fly out and come see this guy's mom. Do I have to come to that one? Yeah. All right, I'm on the way. Set it up. So he's being told which, which living rooms he has to walk into. He don't know who it is. He probably has the greatest grassroots uh, organization of scouts out there that you could put. I, I, I would love to see the budget for Alabama football scouts. Mm. That they're just kicking. I guarantee you, they're just guys, they're throwing them out $2,000 a month, you know, uh, and, and giving them per diem to ride around and go out and just go to these football games, go to these practices, go to these. 707 in these domes in the, in the summertime, all these times going out here and just finding a kid. Did you see, I mean, I know we're going to talk about the, the, uh, the national championship game here a little bit, but did you see these kids when, when the top flight receivers were going down from Alabama and all of a sudden you saw, here come another six, four, 200 pound, four, three, four, four sprinter with lightning quick speed. Who and this guy's a freshman, and that guy's a freshman, and that, I'm like, oh my god! They just keep running them out there. How do they find these people? Because they have great scouting networks. Recruiting, set up. recruiting, recruiting, my friend. Right, and they and they win the living room because they know what living room to go into. Mm-hmm. I'm right. just gonna ask you this: Did you see this young man who was playing for Alabama, whose necklace caused more than some people's house? Well, but hey, you know what? Hey, hey. Uh, we can make a million dollars. We can make a million dollars playing uh, in college right now. Yeah. Uh, if if they'll give me the money. So yeah, you know, uh, Uncle Luke from Two Live Crew. Mm-hmm. He could he could have every if he had the coins. He could have everybody just oh, and see I'm wait I'm waiting to get one of these college teams sponsored by Jay Z. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Syracuse brought to you by Jay Z. By Jay Z, everybody can, everybody flying in on the G5. Man. You know, everybody everybody getting a ten year old. All your top guys getting like a ten year old. Uh, 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 um, uh, Rolls Royce. You know what I'm saying? Coming everybody, 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 everybody got a, a Phantom that's 15 years old. They can afford that. Can you Phantom, imagine? Phantoms what? that are 15 years old. I bet you right now, how much a, a fan was this? 2021? Yeah, probably about 40, 50. I bet Maybe less, less than, than that, that. Probably about 30. Let, between let 20 and 30. Ten, let me see a ten, Let me see how much a. Uh, let me Google on the old Googles here, oh, and see how much a 20. Not on the Google machine. Minute. The Google machine, 2015 oh, ghost. I want to see how much a 2015 ghost is, right? Now. Okay, 2015 ghost. ghost. Right Let's now, how, right What's now. What's it going for? I'm looking. Hold on. Use Rolls Royce to sell. Hold on. My Google, my little chipmunks are chipmucking over here. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, five. Let's see. True car, twelve thousand nine hundred. No, hundred twelve thousand. Oh, 20, 2011 ghost. Oh, what the hell? I can't see. One hundred fifty-eight. That's a twenty sixteen ghost. One hundred fifty-eight thousand dollars. Stop it. What what blue book are you looking at? A twenty eleven rolls. A twenty eleven ghost is eighty seven thousand. That seems like that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for a ghost. Hell, you can buy a new ghost for. You can buy a new. No, hell no. That's too much money. Mm-mm. Um, that's too 
That's way too much, my friend. Let me look and see. Uh, yeah. hey, oh, who? You're going to have to go down maybe to a Bentley then. Yeah, something. They, they can get something for it. They can get a 2015 something. Let's look at it. Let's see what we're going to get. <laughs> get a 2015. Anything? Uh, something. Let's see. I'm trying to get something they can get that's funky. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Like an S550. How much is that? Now that's gonna be that's gonna be in the right spot. Now that's a 2015. Yeah, 2015. That's 550. Let's see how much they're running for. Okay. But no, they're about they're 100 and some change coming straight out the bay. Let's see. All right. So a 2015 S550 you can get for 48 thousand, and that's a nice ride. That's a nice ride. 2015 S550. That's a nice ride. Okay. So you mean J JC can't sponsor the top, you know, top three, four, two, three running back, wide receiver? Here you go. Here, Bentley. I mean, here's the uh here here's the 2015 S550. Well, with the new rules and being able to get sponsorship and all the good things that college players can do now, I mean it shouldn't be hard. You can just right. imagine what if this had been 20 years ago at the U and you could just get whatever oh. player. And I just sponsor Uncle whoever Luke, you wanted. I mean, Uncle Luke and them would have been wild, but then you'd have you'd have you'd had the Miami Hurricanes sponsored by Scarface. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Yes, and uh, they've been running around. <laughs> they they've been running around, and who? Well, the, the guy in Scarface, his 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 son was on the uh, baseball was on the little league baseball team. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah he 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 he'd have been sponsoring uh, University of Miami. Okay, so let's get back to this quickly before we get ready to get out of here for this segment. Who do we need to sponsor to get on the Bears offensively to get them back in shape? <laughs> Wait, like they were in shape. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, you slay me, G Diddy. Anyway, I just don't know. I I think I think I think. Uh... I don't know if they hit on this on this quarterback. Mm. I'm not sure. Because you should have mm. seen something. Andy Dalton outplayed him behind the same offensive line. Mm. Well, we know Nick Foles did. Well, Andy Dalton outplayed um, Justin Fields behind the same offensive line. <sighs> so, you know. Hey, oh, I got, here's a question I asked the other day, and I want to ask it to you. Okay. Who would you rather have right now? Right now. Would you rather have Justin Fields or nope. Taysom Hill from the Saints? Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill. I said exactly the same thing. I'd rather have Taysom Hill. Mm -hmm. That's not good. Mm -hmm. That's not good. All and right, so you. how does this Deshaun Watson thing re-intersect? How does that uh, work? I don't know. Because you know Deshaun Watson is his homeboy. That's who he was down yeah, there training yeah. with. Well, I mean, I, I mean I'm sure Deshaun Watson, Deshaun, you love that Deshaun Watson. You just don't know if he's going to be out of jail. You know? <clears throat> I mean, it's you true. know, unless he, can get, unless he can get everybody paid off. That's true. You know, and keep, you know, the traveling massage parlor, whatever. Somebody just need to buy him his own massage parlor that only he can go to. <laughs> <laughs> I said... I'm sorry, sir. This is only for Deshaun. Yeah. Only for Deshaun. I know That's you're it. his dad, but I'm just saying this is only for Deshaun. So. Who? I mean, I mean, look. I mean, I know it's it's you know I'm joking about it, and you know it's it's a uh, you know let's you know let's not do things to women that women don't want you to do. Right. Number one, that's just wrong. Mm -hmm. Either way you look at that, that's just wrong. Don't do that. But <laughs> my whole thing is is this: who are his people? that are allowing him to go out here and do this nonsense. Because you can't tell me you don't know. You can't tell me that he's, a, and he's been doing this. This ain't nothing new. This so is his thing. This is his thing. And if that's your boy, you know what his thing is after a while. Because he done told you, man, you know what I do? Man, I, <laughs> instead of calling these chicks, I go, I should be massages. And yeah, for $200. Now, do you know how this chick's thinking she's going to get a $200 tip right. from a pro football player? Oh, it's going to be a good day. I'm going to get a massage. I'm a massage guy. And, you know, which I don't get opportunity to do because usually these guys don't even let people like me touch them because they're not, you know, they have the high money, 
right. physical therapist guys with the, you know, hot rocks and the Aruba juice and, you know, stem, stem and all this type of stuff. But here you show up and Marcy's massage parlor <laughs> and, and Cookie <laughs> Emporium and here you show up massage envy, you know, how, how you doing? Girl, I didn't know who that was. He came in here. I didn't know who it was. Here you are. You're going to give her a $20 tip. You, know, uh, you, you ain't even giving her a $20 tip. I you think that's here, what they're upset about. And you up here, get well, the tip. Hey, right. You up here trying to, you know, hey, a little bit lower, a little bit to the right. It's like, come on, man. You know, and apparently, and apparently this is his thing. This, I bet you it keeps him from going to strip clubs. I'm sure in his mind, that's what he's got going on in his head. You know, I'm not at the strip club, but uh, I'm sure. I'm sure that's what he's got going on in his head. It's something weird going on up in there. Yeah. So, just, so sad. Well, how much money has he, how much money has he made? Mm. You know, he's made a good amount of money. I mean, you know, he just had this little weirdness just came out because, you know, he didn't, um because he was being creepy about it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's Extra what the problem creep. was. He was just being creepy. He's extra creepy. You no, know, and then nobody around him would uncreepy him. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, uh, you can't do that. You know, his, so, sis, his sister, his mama, somebody knew he was out here. Somebody had to tell him. Somebody knew it. So again, we're we're luck, we're stuck right here. Um offensively, we found out that none of the Bears players except Darnell Mooney or who we thought they could be. Because nobody even knew who Darnell Mooney was. Before no, and, 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 he, and he afforded himself possibly some extension into some NFL contracts. Yeah. You know, because he could actually get out and catch football. So, so offensively, are they stuck? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so who's your number one wide receiver? You don't have one of those. You don't have one. Who's your number one tight end? It was Jimmy Graham, but he fell down to the third. Well, you uh, know, Jimmy, Jimmy Graham, Graham played when he wanted to. Jimmy Graham was being paid really high NFL money to right. play that position, right? So now you got him. Now you got Khalil Mack. I'm just going on the other side of the ball. He's being paid like he's an NFL quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, you have an NFL quarterback playing like he's an actual guy who actually plays. Uh, so until you get $30 million off your books that you just tossed around foolishly, um, you, you're not going to get that much help because you don't have the money to help. You still got to pay all these people all this money. So it's, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't care what you do, though. Until you build this offensive line, it doesn't matter. I think that's it. That's it. I think that's where we are. Until yeah. you get this line put together and until you're able to get some stability with this line, I think the wide re to me, the wide receivers – are probably the least of your concern because you're always going to have a Darnell Mooney that's going to come out of somewhere. They've got a tight end by committee. You need to play uh, uh, Jesse James more and Hartsford more and, and some pack. Hey, he's more of a gangster than anybody else they got over there. You're Jack. right about that. Absolutely. So you got to play them when you can. You might need to pick up a fullback somewhere in this mix. Hey. You need all the help you're going to get right now, okay? Yeah, okay. With that line, you might – if Jermaine Effetti is there again next year, somebody at Hallis Hall should be assassinated. Yeah, don't, don't be surprised. I'm just saying. Somebody – surprised. There should be a shot coming from above if you see Jermaine Effetti come out and play anything. Don't be surprised. I'm just saying. It's just it's, – it's a bad thing. But, look, we're going to transition over. We're going to talk about – the national championship. And we're going to pay off the listeners with the number one question. Can Georgia, can Alabama, as presently constituted, can they beat the Chicago Bears? This is a game we like to play. We play this all the time. Who can beat the Chicago Bears? Is it the Little Sisters of the Poor, or is it Notre Dame? These are games we're going to play, and until we get a real staff up there, we'll just keep playing this game. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. So all you got to do is just sit right 
just sit there. Just sit there, relax. We're going to play this game real quick. We're going to go through who is the best college football team that could beat the Chicago Bears. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Just don't worry about it. We'll do it. You're listening to The Sizzle, the talk of the 219, the hottest sports talk in the region on Iron Skillet Radio and Iron Skillet Television. (laughs) Make sure that you follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Iron Skillet Sports. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to Iron Skillet Sports on YouTube at Iron Skillet Sports. 